Hi, it's Mark Marmer from Signature Electric. So I am here with my friend, Will Steimel. Wilf is a, a director and the president of the EV Society. And the other day we were on the phone and you happened to, I'm almost positive you mentioned to me that you had an F-150 Lightning. And I thought, I'm not sure that that's actually possible. And sure enough, you did get an F-150 Lightning. I'm thrilled that we're doing this together. And it was, could you please bring this over so we could do some filming? Because our audience would love to see this. So and 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 he bribed me with a coffee. That's what got me down here. <laughs> it takes very little. Yeah. Here we are. And here it is. Here's the here's the F-150 Lightning. I think it was the first question I asked you. So how exactly did you get your hands on this thing? Because I've just not seen too many of these spilled in the wild. Yeah, this was a year wait. So uh, portal opened, I had uh, everything ready to cut and paste and cut and paste and press enter and get my name at the top of the list and here we are. So the uh, charging market's a uh, standard J1772 for level one and level two charging. So I can charge on uh, household 120 volt or uh, 240 volt. And one of the important things they did here is the onboard chargers that take this input from household current and charge it to the battery. The onboard chargers are capable of charging at 80 amps. So I can, it's a fairly large battery. This is the extended range battery, which is 131 kilowatts, mm -hmm. uh, kilowatt hours rather. And uh, I can charge it fairly quickly at home because they have these big household uh, onboard chargers. So that's the first thing, but it is a standard. So right now I don't yet have Ford's own charger, but I'm using a generic charger that I used for my last electric vehicle and that will charge this. GC fast, so it is CCS. So those are the uh, high voltage DC pins. Mm -hmm. That is the standard. Uh, What's happening over here? Do you know what this is here? Yeah, so when I'm charging, this this gives me a quick glance of my state of charge. Oh, okay. And that also lets me pull the, uh, the plug out, the plug locks in. Speak to your electrician, talk to them about the driving that you do. And if you do 200 kilometers of driving a day, uh, a 20 amp charger, not 100 amps, yeah. will fill that 200 back up by the next morning. So even though you bought maybe a large charger, and that includes the Ford charger, mm -hmm. you can dial it back. And I will tell you the good news from a technical point of view about the Ford charger. The Ford charger is turned down by removing the front cover and turning a small dial inside the charger. For the Electrical Safety Authority here in Ontario, that is an acceptable way to turn down a charger and to provide a smaller fee to it. If it's done through software, like the Tesla charger is done, it's not acceptable. If they feel that the owner can turn it up and down, then they would like you to wire it to the maximum of the charger. Uh, even if you take the Ford charger and you dial its charge speed down, it is a bi-directional charger. So it's very unique amongst chargers that it can pull power out of the vehicle and power your house. Ford says for three days, that's average loads in the house. They say if you're conservative, you can stretch that to 10 days. Here we don't have a ton of power outages, but if you're in some of the southern states and outages are a norm, and we see a lot of these vehicles down there, uh, so the, the very compelling the idea to be able to, to charge your home. We've overbuilt our grid and our generating capacity enormously when we look at how much energy we need in a 24 hour period. And here in Ontario, overnight, we sometimes go negative where our energy costs, we're producing more than we can use. So we've got this big disparity between these peak loads, um, which everything is built out for, and these real low periods overnight. And that's where electric vehicles play an important role because they charge overnight. I plug it in, I set my timer to start at seven o'clock when the peak drops. Yep. And now I'm bringing up that, but the other thing, which is what you were talking about, is I have the ability to push that energy back into the grid when it needs it during the peak. So instead of relying on a few generating stations, Niagara Falls, Pickering, wherever it might be around the province, we generate our electricity and come online, uh, peaker plants that come online during those times to, to, to supply that excess that can pull in and push back out. So to pull in when we've got excess, push out when we need it, and in the process of doing that, we're also creating a more resilient grid. I think the one that uh, really everybody enjoys seeing is, uh, is the lack of a uh, big, uh, big engine in front. This is very cool. Look at, look at the height. This is, you know, you're bringing the groceries home. It's right here and in. 
I know you want to tell me that every single time I open anything or walk three feet, there has to be some kind of power outlet, right? So it does. You're right. So over here are four 20 amp oh, wow, outlets look and at this. USB outlets. So I'm, wow. I'm, you know, when I come to the job or whatever I'm doing or going camping, I've got everything I need right there. Absolutely. And, and when you take your uh, your break in the job, that's uh, they put a cooler with a drain, so you can fill that with ice and drinks. Put your lunch in there. And just just like my car did, not too many fluids, just just up here for for the windshield washer, right? Uh, the windshield washer and uh, and there's a, flu a coolant tank down here. And that's that's it. Yeah. And that that normally doesn't need anything. It's not. This is a coolant that for the battery, right? Okay, got it. Okay, I'm 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 loving this part. Again, I'm not much of a truck person, but this automatic lowering of is this a standard thing in a gasoline as well? Or certainly, my other trucks I had didn't uh, work nearly this fancy. No, and you can lower this from the inside as well. I can lower it from the inside or from key. Okay, so I mean, uh, just every little detail. There's so like, much thought that went into this. So I'm sitting here doing some work. There's my cell phone. There's my drink. Here's my writing surface. Here's my ruler. And, and when I want to get into the truck. Oh, uh, this is for me, right? Right. This is exactly. So, so there we go. I'm not doing this big hop up onto the tailgate. I've got a step to get in and out, and load and unload. Absolutely. That's amazing. Clamp spot here. If you need to cut a piece of conduit, put your conduit down, put a C clamp in here to clamp down lumber well, or something saying. like that. There's a lot of thought that's gone into this as a practical work vehicle. And we got some, uh, there's some, I guess, lights in the back here as well. But lights all around. Uh, you know, most importantly, we can't, uh, can't walk around the truck without showing some more outlets. So another, uh, another four NEMA 520 outlets. Under 20 volt. Okay. Uh, 20 like a regular amp. home outlet. Yeah. 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 And a NEMA 1430, L1430. So this is the equivalent of a generator output. Okay. Combined on the truck, the truck is able to deliver 9,600 watts. So it's the equivalent of a large contractor generator, 9,600 watt generator. So we're, we're, we're in the car now, uh, out of the hot sun. And I, we can talk about the first thing that I was asking about, which is, I remember seeing something here where I could put my papers down and, and what have you. How does, well, how does that I'm, actually I'm work? I'm going to start with my cell phone. Start with there's, there's a wireless okay. charger right there, so I just drop it in. It's charging. Perfect. If I want that. Oh, I can it. see it charging. Okay, Close great. that and just make it look nice. Okay. And if I'm stopping to eat lunch or do some work, the, the, the shifter here, I move that out of the way. It folds down flat. This becomes my work surface yeah. to have lunch, to put my laptop out. Uh, there's a there's a Wi-Fi hot uh, hot zone in the in the truck, so I have I've got Wi-Fi connectivity wherever I am. I've chosen to subscribe to, to things like wire, uh, wireless data. Um, I have my Google a link to this, so we've got Android so Auto. Android that, Auto. Yeah. It's linked to my phone and and you know my podcasts. Or so whatever. the Android Auto is standard in the vehicle. That's standard a, a, as is uh, Apple CarPlay. Um, I can also speak to the car through the Ford, so I can. Add Ask uh, the car by addressing it as Ford. But why don't you take us? Where's the nearest home people? Uh, okay, yeah. Okay, Ford. Take me to Home Depot. Which item would you like? Two. Starting route to Home Depot. Right. What would cool. a truck be that couldn't take you to Home Depot, right? That's fantastic. When you look at the layout, the top half is the main thing you're looking at. These tiles are the latest things you used. So it automatically just populates tiles oh, and I okay. can very quickly go back to my Android Auto uh, or go back to my nav or whatever, you know, my radio. If I'd use the radio, that would be a tile there. Um, and then the bottom part is the, um, the uh, climate control. So it's laid out sort of as three. It uh, becomes very intuitive very quickly. If I want to do a deeper dive on uh, on this, there are two buttons up here. One, I have my face in the middle, and those are the shortcuts to all the different things it does, the radio and the phone and what have you. Um, and then I've got the picture of the truck, which is where I have my controls and settings. So where I can tell it what kind of vehicle I'm towing, uh, I can uh, use the onboard scales. 
if I've got a load in the back, it will tell me what my load is and make oh, sure I'm this not. This is amazing. Uh, make sure I'm not overloaded. Um, what I, smart hitch? What's this? I can I can use the uh, smart hitch and, and the towing. It had uses the rear view camera and reflective stickers you put on your different trailers. You tell it which trailer you have connected, um, and then you use the pro trailer control if you're not comfortable backing up a trailer if that's not something you wow. do a lot. Uh, you use this to steer it in the direction you want it to go rather than steer in the opposite direction. Got it. Um, and and it, it comes with a brake controller as well. So if you have a trailer that is above the limit where you need electric brakes in the trailer, the controller is built in where I can just adjust the uh, power of the brakes from here. And of course, they they come on automatically as the truck's slowing down. There's lots of great features. The you know the lighting around the truck. You saw the light bar when we were outside. Yeah. Uh, there's lights on the side of the mirror. There's lights on the back of the running boards. And and you have there's a lighting zone I can turn on here. I can light up around the truck if I'm, if I'm at a job site and I need lighting over there, I'm working on something, I can use the truck to cast light in that direction and light up either a campsite oh, or a job site. There's, there, there's so many things that we could get into. We could spend all day here uh, looking at all the things that they thought about in this vehicle. So Ford has done uh, Blue Cruise, uh, uh, GM has done Super Cruise. There's a, there's a lot of different technologies that are sort of the lane keep uh, autopilot sort of technology. Um, Ford has used cameras, so we'll see this later on. Uh, they have a small camera here, they have a small camera there. And in fact, in, the, in, in your video, you might in fact see the infrared lights that are there. They might show up as little glowing red lights. You, well, you and I can't see it, but you, you, you know, the viewers might see it in the video. Okay, well, uh, why don't I put my seatbelt on and we'll, uh, All right, we'll, we'll do uh, something. You see it says hands-free. And uh, right now the cameras are looking at my eyes. And as long as I pay attention to the road, it will drive, it will follow the road, it will follow the car ahead of us. Uh, I have my cruise control set at the speed limit right now. The car ahead of us is doing 90. It's, uh, if he speeds up or slows down, we're just gonna, it's gonna follow him. Um, and uh, it does just about everything. It won't take an off ramp. Uh, it won't change lanes on me, so I still have to signal. And, uh, so when you signal and it changes lanes, like, do you have to re put it back into cruise, or, or will it stay in? No, it will stay. It, it will come back on. And there it goes, hands free. As soon as I'm in the lane, settled. okay, settled in the lane, and it will let me know right away if there's uh, if there's any reason that it feels unsafe driving. But if there if it was confused at all, it would be at me and immediately say you need to take over. And that's why the cameras watch my eyes to make sure I am paying attention to the road and I am ready to uh, to take over if I have to. I'm going to look down at the instrument cluster right now. Ed's still looking forward. It says watch the road. If I didn't notice that, it beeps at me, I'll look up. Yeah, it knows I looked up. And we're back. Amazing. So if I turn my head to you, if I even turn my eyes to you for too long, that is something else. It then. knows I'm not paying attention. In this car and in a lot of cars, the regen is pretty much so good that you almost have no reason to touch the brake pedal. Well, it works perfectly well, and if you need it in an emergency, it's fine. Watch this gauge here, Daniel. As I take my foot off the accelerator, I'm not touching the brake. The energy is going back into the battery, and then watch what it says. 100% energy returned. So all that energy that would have been lost to braking went back into the battery, and I didn't have to touch the brake. Here we have this big truck with all these receptacles and we thought maybe it would be interesting to demo something because the truck actually comes with a little adapter that'll actually allow you to charge a car. So we grab the Nissan Leaf. Here's the charger that comes with the Leaf. Here's the, uh, right? And this is the adapter that comes comes with the truck. You didn't have to buy this, right? That's right. Stick it in here. Okay. The other car. We're plugging That's in. it. And we're charging the uh, Leaf from the Ford. Okay, so we've enabled the receptacle in the back. You have to enable it through the uh, dashboard and it's showing 1080 watts here and 1080 watts of the output of the 3600. That's the car accepting the charge out in the back. And if we look at the charger, we'll see the uh, lights are on on the charger. And if we looked at the car, we'll see that the car is working. So here you are sort of uh, like a, I don't know, tow truck pulling up and giving you a little extra juice to get where you need to go. They keep saying, this is the future. This is the future. Uh, the futures are electric cars. I've been hearing this now forever. Well, the future, little by little, is coming along. 
here we have the, the Lightning charging our Nissan Leaf and everything just sort of coming together. Something very cool that we've never seen before. I, I'm so excited. So I just want to thank you so much for taking really a lot of time with me here. And uh, I appreciate this. And I appreciate our connection with the EV Society and my connection with you. Let's tell a little bit more about uh, the EV Society, uh, how we're going to contact the EV Society and, and a bit of how people can get connected. Sure, and and first of all, Mark, thank you for doing this for, like you've been doing these videos, you've been doing this educational piece yourself and through Signature Electric for so many years. And it's so important and it really is the core of what we do with the EV Society as well. We're not for profit, as you know, you're on the board of directors. Right. Um, and we have uh, members across Canada. We have about 3,000 members right now in uh, 2022. Um, and we're organized into chapters across the country, about 30 chapters. Uh -huh. and, and I think our strength in doing outreach and education the public the way you do is uh, just from our perspective as owners not trying to sell anything to anybody just sharing our experience of what works with electric vehicles and having that collaboration across the country where we talk to each other we share uh, what we're doing amongst uh, owners so that we can better educate uh, the public and then we are regional chapters so when we're doing outreach in St. John's Newfoundland or we're doing outreach in uh, Victoria BC we understand that area we're talking to our neighbors we're talking to our co-workers. We're talking about what works with electric vehicles and that's what EV Society is all about. So for more information, uh, yes, you uh, visit uh, evsociety.ca and if you haven't already, please join. Great. And in the meantime, if you do want to see more stuff like this, signatureelectric.ca or even give us a shout. We're here in Toronto, 416-490-8093. Uh, we'll add this to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Signature Electric. Everybody enjoy the balance of the summer and uh, this will be the way to be uh, to, to be camping soon, right? All your power and everything you need. I, 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 know, I know exciting stuff is coming now that we have this much power in the Stay back tuned. of the unit. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Thanks, Will.